What? What are you sitting down for? Well, I'm, I'm waiting for a reservation. Reservations for what? It's 10 o'clock. You said you were taking me to brunch today at 10. I thought it was kind of weird. You were taking me to brunch. You were taking me out to eat. I, I was taking you somewhere where animals eat, but I mean, it doesn't mean we get to eat. So this isn't about us? It's never about us, Steve. It's I thought this was kind of a weird location it, for brunch. It's a weird brunch location, I know. All right. This is our zoo adventure, Steve, 10 o'clock, Monday, like <sighs> every Monday, not brunch. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Steve in front of the camera, Wendy behind again for Zoo Adventure. Thank you so much for tuning in. Did you have a good weekend? Did you have a good weekend? It was hot. Where you are, is it hot? Where are you? It's hot here. You ready to go inside? Yeah, they're loading up the truck. We are at the commissary at the zoo. And the commissary is where they make all the diets for the animals. And they're prepping this truck. This is the zoo's definition of fast food delivery. <laughs> How about that? We're going to sneak in here. Oh, here comes John with some bucket of food. Two buckets of food. We're going to make it go quick. Whew. Whew. Good deal. So yeah, we're inside the commissary, guys. How awesome is this? So now we're going again behind, behind, behind the scenes. This is where a lot of the magic happens for the animals. Diets and the enrichment items. Remember the term enrichment? Raise your hand. Who, has, who remembers enrichment? I do. I'm raising my hand. Wendy has her hand up. I just can't see it. I can see it. Good job, Wendy. And they are they're loading up that truck we saw because the commissary guys do more than just make the diets here at the North Carolina Zoo. They do much more than just make them. They actually deliver the diets. I know. I actually worked at zoos before where you had to go pick up your own diets every morning. And when I started working here as a keeper, right. they said, oh, they get delivered every day. And I thought, oh, oh my God, I hit the jackpot. When I was a keeper, again, for my little tiny bit of time, one of my jobs, the last part of it, was to make the diets. Oh, and yeah. I put them in the cooler, and the keepers came to get all the diets. Yeah. I didn't have to deliver anything. It's crazy here how they take that, that delivery, that service, to the nth degree. And this is a neat space. I've been lucky to be here a couple times, but it's always so cool to be inside here. I love it. You guys want to see the first thing? I want to go in this room. Yeah, while well, they're loading up before yeah, we get to Let's show you in this cool space. So we're going in a place that's not an exit. We're going to sneak in here. This is only one of two rooms. Right? Two, Steve. They've got two big, huge rooms like this for grain storage. And all of these bags are for storing grains from different types of animals. So what she's showing you there, all this different primate diet, turkey and potato recipe stuff. This is for, and you can see here, it's for the red wolves. So they keep all this in here. So it's right there at their fingertips, too. It's so well organized. It would have to be. There's so many animals. I want you to think of how many animals are the zoo people feeding every day. How many animals is the zoo staff or the commissary guys creating diets for? How many animals? Give us your guesses in Give the comments. Give us a good guess in a comment. This is one of my favorite diets. There's actually a small bird diet. It's a small bird diet. How cool is that? Keep thinking about those numbers of staff, of animals. I'm going to give it to you in a sec because I know it. We actually had an inventory at the zoo recently, so I am accurate up through June 30th. All these, I mean, Wendy, can you, it's so much. Exotic animal nutrition. Yeah, this isn't stuff you can buy at like Costco <laughs> or Walmart. Right, yeah. You're not buying primate diet. And there. those were zebra pellets, by the were way. Were they? Nice. Primate diet. I'm Which, a primate. by the way, I'm you know, I have actually tried one of the primate biscuits before. You did not. Yeah, the, the leaf eater biscuit. And right? it actually is kind of sweet. It's not bad. Really? I'm not lying. It's actually pretty good. Not gonna lie. Are you monkeying around? Oh my lord. 
You said you weren't lying. Oh, here's John. We'll meet him in a second. John's got work to do. We're going to meet John in a minute. He's the commissary supervisor. Some other things. Look at Big John going to carry and stuff. And even for our, our maybe elderly um, animals, How we have cool. some elderly cats. And it's just so that neat. Kids care. And look at the, I mean, the structure of the organization is beyond. I couldn't yeah. do this. I, I kind of want them to come hit up my pantry <laughs> help me out at home. That's hilarious. That'd be great. And that's one of two green and they have, Exactly. they got two rooms like that. So that's kind of neat. So what is that? Oh, what, are you kidding me? <laughs> Seriously? Everywhere you go are these gross little white things. Seriously? Steve. There's no animal here eats. Nobody likes those. Um, a lot of people like onions Nobody likes except onions. for you. Nobody likes onions. I'll cut the onions so you can cry. Do not cut the onions. We'll ask John to throw those away. <laughs> I love onions. I am not an onion fan. Zero in the way of onion goodness. Not a good thing. So you taking off, Cap? You're going to take yeah. one for your deliveries? Yeah. All right, say hi. Thank Goodbye. You. Thanks for delivering. I'll show them what the truck looks like. As it gets ready to go. Hey, John, you got onions. I do. Get rid of the onions. The Who chimps. eats onions, John? Chimps Between you and me. Chimps and baboons. Chimps and baboons. Yeah. The worst animals on planet. No. <laughs> Not at all. He's, he's, just, he's just being difficult. I am. But it's onions. Onions. Yeah. So how many animals you come up with? Did you, anybody throw some answers out there for us? How many animals? This is a crazy number. Drum roll. 1,326. All around one dining table at the North Carolina Zoo. Ooh, that's a big table. That's a huge table. And think about, there's over 230 different species here that John and his team have to set up for. How many people work in here with you? There's five of them. Five. Five people make that many diets. Whoa. Did you know that? Seriously, five people, 1,326 diets. 230 plus different types of foods that have to go out. And you got to know the individuals. That animal does, that animal doesn't. That species will, that species won't. Right? That's insane. All here, taken care of by somebody like John. Meet John Saunders. He's the commissary supervisor here. Say, John, hey, John, hey, say hi to everybody. Hey, how are you guys today? I promise you right now, there's people on the other side, on our digital guests, they love meeting you guys. Okay. So somebody is waving at you right now. <laughs> We're already getting some thumbs up. See, there you go. Great. Five people. And John is one of them. I am one, yes. He is their leader. The supervisor is one of them. The supervisor is doing the work. Of course. Right? So, onions. Let's skip the onions. Okay. We'll come back to commissary. We'll come back to these things in a second after those get something done with them. <laughs> I hear noise. Yes. It is a food item. It is a food noise. item making noise. Yes. Food item making noise. Ta-da! That's not the food item. Look at all that food. Crickets, worms, worms, other. Look at those numbers, first of all. Look at a by the thousand. thousands at Desert. And I can attest I worked at Desert. I fed out all of those crickets when I was a keeper at Desert, as well as those wax worms. I love that we're feeding out wax worms in cups. Yes. Three <laughs> cups. Of yeah, them. not individuals. Now, can you imagine counting them out? One. Two, Some animals three, do. They get four. like 12 Education for breakfast. Eight. Education gets what? Eight each. We count out eight of them. Really? Education. Yes. Here's look where at this. the noise was coming from. Here's where the noise is coming from. I'm going to... John, may I put on a, a, a light okay. real quick? We're sure. okay. They can see. You can? Yeah. They can see. Get down. So, John, why is... Why are those little... Um, food the drink trays in there um it's just a place for them to habitate whether in their place oh, for them to, okay. to hang out and live in um instead of just being on the bottom i see so it kind of gives them more space sure yeah, they can hide exactly. in there get away okay. from yep they can be their neighbors if they want to yeah 
And you have to take care of these guys too, of right? Course. Yeah. So they may not be counted in our collection, in our population at the zoo. They're not one of the residents. Hmm. But, I mean, there's food, there's yep. water, there's space, there's heat, there's hiding homes. Yep. So these guys are taken care of just like a lion would be, just like sure. the other animals. How about that, guys? <laughs> In the commissary, we have a few live food items. This is the only thing that gets fed out live, by the way. That's a question we get asked a lot. Yep. Only the inverts exactly. are fed out live. We don't feed out mice. We don't feed out chicks. Only the invertebrates are fed out live. I want to show you one of Wendy's favorite things in the whole wide world. So they have this entire space, right? This whole room is for the animals. This whole room is for the animals. A few lockers, a few lockers. Two refrigerators, a freezer. couple freezers. You saw the you saw the dry room, two, two rooms, huge dry room. Oh, the hay barn. Hay barn. One little office. One little office for John. And check yeah. this out. Come here. Come here. This tiny, tiny fridge is for humans for humans that's it that's all they get that's all the employees get in here this is it <laughs> this is the human fridge now why is that the case you can't have a can't have human food and animal food together yep usda violation even though this food they feed out is restaurant quality yes yes it is the food is restaurant quality that can be fed out you can eat i can eat it we don't, the seafood, but you can. The seafood that we get here is the same that gets up put on your table at a four or five star restaurant. Exactly. That's the quality of food being fed out here. John, I didn't introduce you to the Muppet, by the way. This is a, this is a, this is a microphone, just so you know. So that's why you'll see me. Does it have a name, though? That's the Muppet. The, the Muppet. He's the Muppet. No specific name. No, nah, you know, he's kind of good general. Figure that. He's got a little toupee going on. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so this is the human fridge. We all wanted to share that with you. And then over here... It's kind of a workstation. Mm -hmm. And John's got a diet going here. Yes. So what, what is this, kind of what happens here, John? This is the part of the bulk of the operation, it looks like. Yeah, our, our smaller animals, their diets are made here. Right now, what's sitting here is a turtle diet. Turtle, uh, okay. That's the Florida box turtle is the one that's king, uh, is on the scale now. So yeah, the one on the left. Um, a lot of our smaller diets are made here <laughs> at this station. Um, so okay. What happens today, we're working on a lot of turtle diets. Okay. Um, so that's what's on the scale getting ready to be made. So you have a scale. You and weigh everything out. Yep. Exactly. So how accurate do you weigh it out to? Um, if it says five grams for green beans, they're going to get five grams. So you right to the gram. Yep. Right to the gram. And those are green beans? Those are green beans that are already cut. Ah, nice. Five grams. And then, boom, from there, the next item is peas. So it needs five grams of peas. I do like a pea. I love a pea. What's wrong? Nothing's wrong with a pea. I love a green Nothing pea. Nothing wrong with a green pea. Look at that. It's like you have an idea what you're doing, John. I know. Right. And then you just follow. Quote, yeah, all the way down. Yeah. Is, that, is that notebook kind of have all the diets that are, we've made, made here at this section? Here. Correct. So if we flip through. Some more organization. Oh, you'd have to be. Guys, is your, are your, is your refrigerator, is your kitchen this organized? Seriously? Is your kitchen digital guest this hey, organized? Our, our, our animal oh, master, our skunk. Our skunk. And the millipede. Mm -hmm. Yay, education. Our Woo -hoo. And then we have a little bigger uh, animal. Oh, animal you met, you, uh, hey guys, remember when you met Kelly? There's Kelly's diet. Remember when you met Kelly? Kelly the porcupine took a walk? With between my legs and almost scared a tar out of me. So she gets some produce and then mm -hmm. she gets some of the chow and the rodent block from the other room. Correct. So she gets a little bit of both. Yep, and we what have those that? down below. We keep painters with some grain in them. Oh, very nice. So that's rodent block. Our prairie dogs get that, the porcupine. Yep. I like it. And what's and that? It was WH. Yeah, wild herbivore. Herbivore oh, wild herbivore. High, high fiber. fiber. Mm -hmm. Gotta have your fiber, that. folks. And look at all this other food in here. I know, here. this is chopped like so nicely. Yeah. What is that? In the chef world, it's called mise en place. <laughs> it's called what? Mise en place in the chef world. You're making that up. Nope, I watch Top Chef a lot. <laughs> mise en place? Yeah. Look it up. Mise en place? Google it. You can Google it. You guys Google it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> So what, what, is the, what is the fruit here, John? This is oranges. That's oranges, okay. And then we have just a little bit of squash, green beans, sweet potatoes, carrots, and then that's just more carrots there. Wow. Romaine? Romaine. Bing. Uh, this is a little collards here, kale, 
Oh, no, we're not kale. fans of kale. It's great nutrition, though. It is good nutrition for the animals. <laughs> and Where do we see kale? Not flamingos. Yeah. Flamingos, flamingos got kale, yeah. That's some fresh strawberries. Oh, God, I love fresh strawberries. Yeah. Some apples. Cool. Yep. Bananas. Look at this diet, that guys. That diet looks amazing. I mean, this is stuff you and I can eat. Yeah, of course. We would make a diet like this. Yeah. How cool is that? I wish someone would measure out my food because maybe I would Me be too. Maybe we wouldn't have issues. <laughs> we all could probably use a little measuring. So the pizzas, <laughs> so the pizzas that come in the box, that's not single serve. That's not one. That's, that's not, not a single, single serve. No. Oops. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome, and just more some more storage. It looks like just yeah. kind of stuff. Containers down here where yeah. the grain and stuff will go in into diets, and we have some soup beds that we work out of. Uh, some more oranges. Okay, John. There's a ton of stuff here. Do you know off the top of your head, I don't like putting people on the spot, but I'm going to anyway. Okay. Off the top of your head, about how much do we pay? How much food? What do we spend a month yeah, a on question. feeding the animals? Do you have that off the top of your head? Yeah, uh, it's about $60,000 a month. What? Wait, yeah. wait. How much do you guys spend in your budget at a home, month? Yeah. At a home. week, a month. What is your monthly budget for food. You don't have to put that in the comments unless you want to. You can. <laughs> <laughs> so is it around 60 a month? 60 a week? 600 a week? 600 a month? 6,000 a year? 60? 6? 0? 60,000 a month? That's insane. That's a lot. The donation button that's on the screen. <laughs> No, I think about it. By the way, donation button, you guys have us at 3760. That's how much you guys have raised for the North Carolina Zoo through Zoo Adventures. 3700 Almost at 4000 We're pushing 4000 I love it. You guys have been so good to us. So thank you so much. And you did say 60, right? I heard that right. <laughs> 60,000. Yes. Six zero. With three more zeros behind it. <laughs> That's good. Six zero 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 times twelve. That's a lot of math. Seven hundred and twenty. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Seven. Almost. You're pushing three quarters of a million dollars to feed the animals with their diet. Mm -hmm. Not. As you guys may remember, we grow some food here. Correct. So it doesn't include the browse. It does not. It doesn't include some of the enrichment items. Yep. Right? $60,000 does not include the browse that we grow here and that the, end, that the keepers go harvest. It doesn't include some of the enrichment items. Speaking, oh, of, speaking of the devil. Hey, George. Hi, George. Hi. George has the compost. He's Remember our, compost? He's our, our, our magic compost man. <laughs> and lettuce. Don't forget the lettuce. Oh, yeah. And lettuce. Speaking of. Thanks, George. He grew this on zoo property. Yep, George. just came from the zoo garden. Well, all right, guys. Okay, so we're going to, let's, I want to take it a different angle. And this, we, we, we didn't plan this either. This we didn't <laughs> plan at all, guys. So I'm going to take it in a little bit different angle. So I'm going to talk for a second. Remember, guys, we did compost. Remember, we did compost. If you didn't see it, go back and check it out. It's pretty interesting, actually. So the zoo composts all of its waste material that it can. We compost our waste from the restaurants, we compost waste from the animals, all that fecal material, bedding, all gets composted. Broken down, six, four to six months, broken down into soil, into compost, into mulch. That's then put back in the park to grow this food. Exactly. That's and then this life. food is fed out, the animals poop it out, <laughs> we recycle it again. Yep. It's a wonderful closed loop recycling opportunity for compost. Yep. And that wasn't planned by it, but, I, but isn't that cool? So George brings us lettuce grown at the park using compost and soil that's created at the park that now John and his team can use to feed out who might get, I don't, I don't, I don't want to put you on the spot no, for that, right. who might feed this, who might, who might get this? Uh, Red River hogs, we may give it to the the number of primates that we have here. Really? Um, yeah, I mean, even the turtles, because uh, we chop oh, no lettuce kidding. for them. So, I mean, everybody's getting it from bears to primates to small reptilian animals. Gotcha. 
Uh, one of our digital guests, Becky, said that lettuce looks really good. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it looks right. Great. It's it's very large. Yeah, that it's is very it's long. beautiful. Yeah. You're not gonna find something. Thanks, that Becky. Large in the I mean, it's crazy good. Yeah, and he brings us bags like this regularly. Really? Yeah. But he's just growing out in the park. Correct. That's and there's a few places like this. We we, we grow trees and bushes, and lettuce, all kinds of other herbs. Yep. Right here, and that doesn't get included in that. What was the number again? Sixty thousand. I don't believe it. But still, that's crazy. I would hate to write that Sixty thousand dollars a month. Yep. This isn't included in that. No. Nope. I think uh, our friends that are answering questions for us, they just put a link so you can see George in action. Oh, good. In our composting. Awesome. Uh, the folks that are behind the scenes, let me think. We have Beth and Leslie and Bob, Bob. and Drew. Thank you guys for answering questions. Give those guys a shout out. It is so nice that Wendy and I can do this, focus on John, focus on this, and our friends behind the scenes are answering questions for you live. How cool is that? Awesome. So thank you guys very much for doing that. Yeah. So, whew, this was so neat. That wasn't planned again, truly not planned. Actually, none of this is ever scripted, yeah. by the way. Not zero is Steve, scripted. Steve and I are really good at winging things. <laughs> So that's what goes on here. Yes. All right. So that's kind of you're creating some of the smaller diets here. And then some black bears, grizzly bears, oh. uh, red river hogs are made here. And then in the mornings we make uh, a fruit vegetable mix that goes out to aviary, avian prop, deserts. Um, a fruit veggie mix. Yeah. Neat. And then what goes on around the corner here? We're going to keep following you. We're right going to here, follow we Wendy have a little our bit. Primate station. Uh, primates. We make all of our primates here: gorillas, baboons, chimps, uh, lemurs. All of their diets are made here. Is there a reason that primates kind of separate from everybody? Or it's, is it just kind of the way it works? It's because there's just so much of it. Oh. It requires all this room because it's a massive amount of produce being processed this every day. by the pound, Steve. Not, <laughs> not by the gram over there. By the pound? Yep. Four, yeah, three, what animal is that? Those are chimps. Yeah. 3.7 pounds, 4.8 pounds of carrots. I mean, wow. That's a lot. 53 yeah. pounds of food is the total diet. And just show them what a carrot really is. These are huge carrots. <laughs> That's a carrot, guys. There's some avocado. Oh, and, and the onions. You came back to the cucumber. onions. Good back golly. To the onions. And you did say the primates, Sweet. they get the onions up, you said? Yes, that? the chimps and the baboons are getting uh, the scallions. John just corrected me kindly, but that's not an onion, that's a scallion. <laughs> he was very nice in the way he corrected me, too. He was I like, can't wait for you to watch the like, video and see this comments because someone said uh, they defined what mise en place was. Mm -hmm. and Lovely. Really? Thank you. It's a real word? It's a real word. And if you look at these real. buckets, um, this is a chimp diet that's been worked on this morning. Look in this bucket, Wendy. Look in this one right here. It is so cool. There's so much to need. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to get in your way. We have kiwi and uh, apples, and then we have oranges, carrots, celery, and then here uh, you're going to see green beans, bananas. Underneath that, which you can't really see right now, is the grain that they're going to get for the day is at the bottom. Of oh, they do bucket. get some green they too. Okay, they, they, they get do. a biscuit. Um, that is so and then this here is one group of chimps. Uh, this is how much romaine they're going to get. No, uh, right, right at nine pounds. Nine no. pounds of salad. Way. Yep. What's interesting is when we look over there, the smaller animals get their food chopped up. Yep. Yeah. The chimps and the larger primates, they get it whole. So it's nice that they're eating it the way that they would. And the keepers are gonna, food. they're gonna chop some of this stuff up. It's yeah. not gonna be fed out completely. They can like do this. kind of what they need. They, they have yeah. small kitchen areas, yeah. nothing this size obviously in sure. areas that they get to process a little bit for their diet. So. Nice. I know for us, you guys, you guys remember meeting Darwin, the Galapagos tortoise? This is, this is a while back. You guys remember meeting Darwin? So for Darwin and for the other Galapagos tortoises that we have, we sometimes have a diet cut up small, and sometimes it's larger so they can work at getting the food, just like they would, like Wendy was saying here, just like they would do in the wild in their natural homes. They've got to go, they've got to take chunks, they've got to bite through, and they've got to tear. So we want the animals to do, encourage those natural behaviors, that enrichment, mm -hmm. So the diet is one way to do yeah. that. And we just had the polar bears, just uh, the, the male, he just got a whole cow leg. For he got a whole cow leg. Yep, for enrichment, um, just so he could have that experience of, you know, tearing and holding. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Gonna, in the wild, they're gonna be tearing through seals. Absolutely, so just, makes perfect sense. Yep. At, a, at another zoo that I worked at years ago, they 
years ago, we, we got a, uh, a cow head yeah. and Ooh. gave it to a hyena. Yeah. Oh, the, the, the first thing it went for was the teeth. <laughs> Started wow. plucking them off and eating the teeth. Really? It freaked me out a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Makes my teeth hurt. Yes. No doubt. But yeah. seeing them do something natural like that was Makes really sense. cool. Sure and and it was enriching. You wouldn't do that every day. No. Uh, but it was awesome to see that. That's cool. Neat story. That's fun. Yeah. I mean, we got we have bones that go out every week. Uh, lions yep. and polar bears yeah. and uh, the wolves. We saw bones get thrown to the lion. Yes, yep. in our lion video. So, I mean, they get that every week, uh, that enrichment item. So cool. we, they get to Which experience that behavior. Is, we heard a rumor. Now, is there a this diet is, no, that you true. have to use a cleaver to yeah. prepare? Yeah. Will you show us? Okay. You have a diet to use, where's a cleaver? And there a really is a like cleaver? A, hammer. Yeah. a cleaver and a hammer? Yeah. Ooh, let's watch. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess we'll go and check this out. It's over here? I love a kitchen. Can we peek? Oh, right over here. Oh. It's a whole other section of a kitchen. Mm -hmm. John, your kitchen is huge. That's, that's an axe. Yes, it is. You're going to use a hatchet and a sledgehammer uh -huh. to make a diet for somebody. Yeah. You want to try? No. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm going to have to stand back while you do yeah. I'm not going to stand near that thing. So I don't know who's the... Okay, John, go ahead. The lucky animal getting this today is one of our lions, Makita. We've met Makita. We've met Makita. So She's the female African so, so lion. it's safe to say back here is where you process the meat diet. All of the meat is processed on, on this the side, other of, the side wall, of the wall. So we don't have any cross-contamination. with. So the vegetarian produce. people don't get upset with exactly. food. Exactly. you got to watch out for our people. Keeping a secret, which is good, right? You don't want to be mixing the diets. Exactly. Oh, we've met the Arctic fox before. Yeah. We've met a grizzly. Guys, thank you so much for watching Grizzly. I hope you really enjoyed that. You sure seem to. Otters we've met. Bobcat we've met. Oh, you're, oh, right. you're going to meet the sand cat soon. You met my favorite ocelot. And then the skunk you haven't met. Someday yet. you'll meet our skunk. So that's cool. All right, right. Wendy. So Rumor has it that Makita is going to get her okay. diet made, and it happens I'm, with a I'm hatchet. Standing back here. Correct. Hatchet and a sledgehammer. So what's in the bag, John? This is a Toronto Zoo uh, meat diet. Toronto Zoo meat diet. Was, yeah. it, was it formulated by Toronto Zoo they staff? They specialized Correct. it, yeah. Okay. It's a, it is a horse meat. Okay. Um, so we're not getting beef out currently. It's from meat. Canada. Correct. Wow. So it's going to be Jeez. Loud. No way. Are you kidding me? That's awesome. It's a hatchet and a sledgehammer busting through... Some Toronto people, meat some diet. Some people chop wood. We chop, chop meat. Exactly. Wow. Are you Let kidding? You bring it over. You weigh it out. You weigh it out. And what's your goal? 1.9. We're not quite there. Almost. John, you're not even close, buddy. Almost. We're getting there. Little nugget. More, more, more sound. Almost. Ooh. That's pretty impressive, John. You know out there know how to do that. Are you kidding me? You're still not there. Wow. So Makita gets a whole bucket of meat. Yeah, her diet just in, uh, just changed, so this this what amount is new for her, but we're getting there. <laughs> oh, there we there go. There we go. Nineteen point zero one. How cool! So. Some of this is a different kind of meat. Correct. That's cool. And we'll look at that in a minute. Wow. Cougars. No kidding. So that so giant now, bucket of meat is for one animal. Yeah. And what happens now? So now you've you've made this crazy sound and with it's this frozen. wicked it's frozen. tools. Yes, this is frozen. It's yes. frozen. Now what happens to it? Right behind you is a freezer. Oh. And oh. all of our frozen stuff. This is going to be. <laughs> This is not going out until tomorrow, so this is not being okay. made uh, for today. Yeah, they will so be frozen. We'll, yeah. So, oh, yeah, sure. So what we'll do is we'll pull this out tomorrow morning okay. and start thawing it. Um, There's some in the cooler behind her that's already thawing. Oh, neat. So we make this in advance, weigh it out in advance, and then we pull it out and we start okay. to thaw it. And so it gets to the keepers and the animals. And you guys even deliver this? Correct, yes. You deliver that, too. Wow, how cool. Yep. Okay. So what what, other, what other morsels are in the freezer? Yeah. Steve and I love How a freezer. Oh, whoa. Let me throw some more gloves on. 
please. Yeah, please put gloves on, John. You want to show them the temperature? Here's the temperature. This is I can't the, read it. This is the warmest of our freezers. My, I, don't, I left my glasses behind. Can the, you guys read that? The one? warmest of yes. the freezers. This is, is the about warmest. This is the warmest. The one. <laughs> the one. <laughs> the warmest out, freezer. The one, one outside is usually sits around negative twenty. So I do love a good freezer. All right. So, so chicks. Here we have some chicks. We know, guys. We understand that it's kind of weird and it's like seriously. So but this here we have carnivores. We have and we have to feed them what they will eat in the wild. We can't feed our carnivores lettuce. We have a lovely lettuce. large rat. Large and we rat. don't want to feed out live animals because that's when animals can get hurt. So we don't want to feed out a live animal and because all, you got to be careful. all of these animals that are fed out are bred for, for meat. Yeah. Sort of like right. the hamburger you get at the store is bred for meat. So we have a quail. And we have a quail. quail the mice, the rats are all bred at a feeder facility. Correct. Now you showed us rats. Yep. I have, I have some smaller stuff in here too. I just didn't bring that, bring that box out. <laughs> because there's different sizes. Yeah, right? there are. There's a large rat, medium rat, and a small rat. Oh, really? Um, yeah. <laughs> that was definitely a large rat. That's a good size rat there. That this looks like a medium. medium. This is a medium. Medium rat. And I think I have some small rats in that box. Yep, right here. Yeah, that's so like a, a, a snake um, that That's might, what my snake gets. Yeah, some snakes can't eat a large rat. Sure. They would only eat a small rat depending on their size. Yep. Um, or wow. depending on the animal. So you have them in different yeah, sizes. Yeah, so cougars would get like medium to small rats. So know your animal here. Yeah, yeah. know your animal. And uh, lions get large rats Do that. as enrichment. Um, our wolves uh, are getting large rats. So, I mean, you know, it's our big meat eaters are getting the, the, oh, okay. the, the bigger rats. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, the, let's get those guys put away. Yeah, they all come from feeder facilities. So even the little chicks, the... Yeah, they're being bred for this purpose. Everything is being bred for food. Correct. So did you think about that, Don? Think about all the stuff that has to go into it. 1,300 animals, over 200 species. You've got to have everything here all the time for the animals that are under our care. And look at the care that's provided just in the diets. You've seen the keepers. You've seen the efforts they put out to it. You've met some of them. And then here in the diet world, and they in the commissary. And they lay it out into kilocalories. Oh, yeah. There's a science behind the diet. What is this? You brought more? Yeah, these are, uh, this is some of our fish. Cool. This here, what you're looking at now is cape one. Then we have uh, smaller fish, silver sides. Neat. Um, cape one, that was one of the, was it the cape one or herring was the... What was, was Nick's favorite? The polar bear? Um, pretty sure it's herring. Yeah, they get herring and capelin both. Yeah. Oh, okay, so. I think it was herring. I think it's also the different time of year was his favorite Oh, that could be. Too. Oh, speaking of that, do you have to be aware of that for the animals? I guess you do, don't yeah. you? The keepers are always point, us what's going up and down. They're letting us know, you know what needs to be adjusted because I have to order all this stuff. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So their diet tweaks and changes. Yep, all that goes through. Uh, Keeper supervisors, then yep. goes through the vet staff, and then I get included in that. And sure. We make the changes. Wow. Yeah, animal nutrition, it's not just putting food in a bowl and, and giving it to the animal. No. They, they count out calories, fat content, Great what time point. of the year it is. Like our bears get more food yeah. in the winter versus the summer um, because that they need to gain weight in the winter. Correct. That's crazy. It's a lot. So it is a, it is a true science. And I have, uh, do you guys want to see bones? Uh, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Who doesn't want to see a bone? I love it. And there, there's something behind me, too, I want to share with you in yeah, a second. Yeah, and that's really fascinating. This is so cool behind me. Can't see it yet. So we think about, about this, giving, huh? giving your dog, you can go to you can go to a pet store yep. and you can go to the butcher and you can ask for a knuckle bone, yep. a whatever, uh, for your dog. Well, we have that here just for our lions, for our polar bear, for our, our big animals. And we have to have a lot more than just one at a time <laughs> than your dog at home. But so if people gets, don't know that, you don't no. have to go to the pet store. You can get them fresh from your butcher yep. without the, the preservatives that you get at the pet store. So who gets bones, John? All right, uh, lions, bears, uh, wolves. Uh, even our bobcats, oh, really? uh, sand cats, you know, it's so really small animals to really large animals. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this is a knuckle bone. It uh, is? Cow bones. 
That's a knuckle bone? Yep. So a little bit of meat on it still. A little bit of meat on it still, but then we also have some, whoa, femur bones. That's a, that's a whole That's a bone there. Yeah, we can just come out. Wow. Yowzers. You know, I've never asked the keepers if they can actually get through that. No, we have. Wow. And I mean, this is just. See the marrow? This is just yeah. part of. You can really see it on this one. Too. A leg. So you can imagine how big the cow leg was. Yeah. Good there. point. Yeah. That's a great point. When, when, uh, so really, it's also using the whole, the whole body too. So we are using the meat. We are using the bone. It's it's yeah. using that. Yep. What they would get in the wild, they get that content. There's something different. You know, the animals yeah. eat the whole thing. You know, when they're when they're in their wild homes. Yeah. So there's something in that that they can use. So it's nice to be able to share that with yeah. them here. And we have, we have rabbits in the freezer as well. And for enrichment, sometimes keepers will ask for a head of a rabbit. Okay. Um, so we I know that our, our red-tailed hawk gets a head of a so rabbit. So we'll yeah. chop the head off the rabbit yep. and send just the head so they can the animal can focus on that. Do what they need that. to, yeah. yeah. So it is hard to think about that because we do we are here to protect animals and to save animals yeah. and to treat them kindly, but we do have to feed our Yeah, and that's horse. part of treating... It's part of treating the yes. animals well. We can buy them from places that, that, are, doing that are raising them humanely and will, yeah. um, then they are raised for that purpose. For we them. are not feeding out any of our animals. No. I've been asked that before. Yeah, no, 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 we don't do that. We would never do that. We would never do that. John, why did you bring out a, a bottle of juice? It's not juice. Yes, it is. That's this grape is my juice. favorite diet here. This why is, did you bring a bottle of grape juice? This is blood. No, it's not. Cow's blood. It is not blood. Yes, it's frozen. No, it's not. It's frozen, though, because they haven't got their fresh delivery. This is blood? Yeah, uh, bovine blood. This is cow blood? It's, yeah. It is frozen, just for everyone at home. Yeah. Normally, it would it would look exactly like this, but it would be liquid. This Correct. is cow blood? Yep. Who gets cow's blood? Who do you think? Mosquitoes? No. Ah, yeah, that's a ah. good guess, but not right. One of my favorite A little animals. bigger. Oh, vampire bats! Vampire bats! Yes, you got it. Really? Yeah. So they get, they get blood. Yeah. They Real, get, honest um, to goodness, blood. I'm trying to think. Uh, we get twenty. They get twenty-two bottles like this every week. Wow. Um, and we that's how it comes. And it comes fresh. No, no, no. <laughs> it comes in a five-gallon bucket. <laughs> of course it does. And then we put it into these Little containers. Over. Nice. So. Now what? It's I mean, the blood comes. Then, yeah. Blood shows up. Sure. The blood show. The, and then what do you do? We divvy it into these containers. Okay. And then we put them in the cooler. Right. Uh, usually, the ones we get in that day, they're still warm. We send those out to desert. They're still vampire. warm. So we send out to. Well, of course. Well, yeah. if you think about it, again, we're using the whole cow. Right. So normally, that blood at the meat rendering plant goes down the drain and it's waste. Correct. But we get to save it. They save it for us. Yeah. And since the bat isn't actually using its mouth and hunting, which if you stay tuned, digital guests, we are doing a bat program soon. We are. You'll learn how bats hunt, but they use a natural anticoagulant. Well, they're not using that, obviously, because they're not hunting this blood. It comes in a bottle. Yeah. So they, we have to add a natural anticoagulant. And we do that here. We add, a, we add that material. Yeah, yeah. because once the blood clots, it's not edible. Kind of like your milk at home. Once that milk kind of gets Curdles, chunky, it's oh. gross, right? So a before that. Since they're not using their anticoagulant. Oh, no we, kidding. It's a powder. We mm -hmm. add it. It's like citric acid, mm -hmm. vitamin C. Yep. And it keeps the blood from clotting. And so it stays liquid in these bottles. They send it to the keepers. And the keepers pour it into little bowls and feed it to the vampire bats twice a day. Yep. And we freeze some in case, uh, sometimes you get the blood in, you put the anticoagulant in with it, and it'll clot up. Anyway. Um, so we keep some in the freezer in case that happens. Sure. We can pull it out, thaw it, and we have I mean, blood. who wouldn't want to keep blood in their freezer for you vampire bats? backup and blood. And backup blood. And right now we have a lot of backup blood because of the pandemic that's going on. Oh. Again. Yay, we're back! Yay! The MiFi got hot! Oh. Again! So we're going to keep it wet. We got to ramp it up because we don't want to leave the air conditioning out too long. The MiFi was in, in the sun and it got hot. You guys still there? Woo! Wendy ran to get the MiFi. Yeah. All right. So 
We just wrapped up vampire blood, bat blood, adding the, adding the citric acid to make sure it stays uncongealed. And I want to share, so that's here. Yep. We talked about meat diets, which is really cool. I want to share this. This is so cool. Come here. We, t we talked about feeding these guys out, but we didn't talk about the work that goes into feeding them before they go out. Those are real worms. You've got to stop moving your hand. Oops. So you guys are what's called gut loading them right now, correct. right? Correct. They'll be gut loaded for three days before they go out. How so cool! And the gut loading is in here. Do you mind if I if I pull this out? John? No, your phone's kind of your. This is your world, but I'm gonna since I'm here in the way. So you're basically filling the worms with nutrients. Yeah, exactly. The they're, good stuff. They're basically empty calories without gut, gut loading them up. Let's move this over here, just in case. <laughs> I think this corner might be the the death of us right now. I don't now. want to put it down. I don't know what's going on over there. So that's the plan. John, what did you bring? This is uh, what we're gut loading them with. This is a high calcium uh, cricket diet. High calcium cricket diet, mm -hmm. but anybody can eat it. Yeah. Yeah. We, my, Meat. Every invertebrate on park that's being fed out is pretty much being dusted with this. And you do this with, you said any invertebrate at the park? Just about, yeah. Cool. And it's called gut loading. Mm hmm putting something in the gut. Yeah. That's good for the animal. Yeah. That's, nice. That's really cool. I love it. Oh, look here. I can't go back there. <laughs> it's Rizzo's container for food. <laughs> you met Kinnicky and Rizzo, the Arctic Fox. Remember that? We met them. So, John, yeah. I did not have to, I have to say that I noticed this. Mm -hmm. And I want to go shopping. Of course you do. I know, it's making me hungry. So, this is food. Yes, it I is. mean, this is food, mm -hmm. not fake food, not animal food. No, I'm sure this is applesauce. I'm sure you have a lot this of this is at home. Great. Yeah, absolutely. I've got this sitting in my house right now. Yep. Juices. Yep. Wait, 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 wait. Wait. You have a chocolate syrup. Yes. Right? It's for the animals. Sure, it's for the animals. Animals. Yeah. Humans are animals. <laughs> Let's see what this Let's is for. Let's see what it's for. All right, John. Seriously, what is that for? They're going to be using this to uh, help get medicine in an animal. Um, it would work for if me. It, if it's not taking like a pill or something. Correct, correct. Really? Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's really the big thing that it's used for. No kidding. It's for medicine. I've used applesauce apple for Applesauce, Pilates. same way. Uh, gorillas get applesauce every day for, for medicine. Honey? We saw yep. honey with um, yeah. the brown bear the other day. You guys remember when the brown bear had honey that when was Alexis that, was that training? That premium treat yeah, yeah, yeah. to... Uh, Train. Raisins, and then we have you know insure and balance bars here for some of our uh, elderly animals. Well, yes, <laughs> of course you do have to have insure and balance bars for the and elderly animals. We know who gets this. This is a premium uh, training treat for our polar bears. Yeah. They love large. They sure do. Remember that treat that they made for Nick? Frozen up. Then we have. Oh look, you have friends phones. Oh my god, those were my favorite when I was a kid. Yeah. And then and prenatal pre vitamins? Pre Seriously? It takes different ones for wow. different animals, what they're going through. But we have we we love having fun with everybody. It's 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 so much it's more fun that way. But if I got serious just for a second, mm -hmm. we have this pandemic, right? We have COVID going on right now. Yeah. Has that impacted us at all in the in the zoo world? Of course. In the diet world? Yeah. Did it? It has. And it hasn't. Okay. Um, we had to cut back on um, some of the things that we could get in Richmond, items like this. Uh, so that, is this why this is stocked up so it's well? It's really stocked up really high right now in Makes case sense. something happens again with food supplies the, uh, we're able to get what the animals need, especially for medicinal purposes, getting sure. medicine is highly important. Um, so this is, the, these shelves are not normally this packed, <laughs> but they are right now. Uh, because we had, COVID. Okay. we had a trouble getting eggs, like everybody. Oh, did. yeah. We had trouble. Did you guys have trouble getting eggs, too? Yeah, Additional yeah. guests? Yeah, yeah, I think they were gone for a while. Hardly any on the shelves for a long time, but we're just in the past few weeks able to start getting eggs again. Got so to. animals are starting to get that again. But luckily, we got great partners with our produce guy. Our uh, grain people are great. All of our meat deliveries, everything has still been happening like that. We've been really? able to get everything we need for our diets. In Richmond Autumns, maybe not everything, but, but still, the main components of their diets, we've been able to get through all of the all of COVID. This so the bulk on. of the diet, not yep. a problem. We've not had we rate, we make some of the food here already. Yeah, of course. Yeah, here's our, our lettuce so again that, that we nice. grew here at the at the zoo. 
Yeah, so I mean, we're, we've been really lucky uh, that we've got great relationships with uh, the people that we get our uh, inventory from. I think that's a great way to say it too, and that comes from the hard work you guys have done here to build up those relationships. Yeah. They're like the keepers and their animals. You build up a relationship with your partners, of course. they're gonna work with you more than against. Exactly. Awesome, it's amazing stuff. So did yes and no, the COVID did affect us, but it did not help. We too were bad. very lucky. Yeah. We were ready, we, we were, were ready, ready. Yeah. and then we had the support. Correct. Hey, is anybody else you want to say hi to while we've got you? Uh, I'll say uh, hi to my wife. Hey, Heather. Well, yeah. <laughs> Heather. Hi, Heather. Hope everything is good. Um, I have a shout out from Drew. Um, Drew Cronin is our um, one of our one of our international conservation guys, and he told us that this Friday, I think it's this Friday, but this week is we're celebrating this international. Week. I need my quote. Is International, oh, it's over here, International Ranger Day. And he sent, he sent us a quote that I want to read to you. I'll put my paper down. <laughs> Thanks, John. Mm -hmm. So the quote goes, this is from um, Drew, and it's all about International World Ranger Day. It's a celebration of the commitment and service to all those working on the front lines of conservation. World Ranger Day is an opportunity to honor those that have lost their lives in the line of duty. Today, all of us at the North Carolina Zoo are proud to stand with our rangers, and the zoo looks forward to continuing their efforts to support the rangers around the world. And I think that's really cool. These partnerships we have, we're so lucky because we, oh. we don't think about what is going on a world away and that some of these rangers have lost their lives protecting these when, animals. When I read that quote from Drew, I was like, you know, I hadn't thought of that. No. That, they, that they're putting their lives on the line to protect the animals that you and I love so much. I know. So thank you so much from Wendy and I and all the North Carolina Zoo John, you want to shout out a thank you to the Rangers yeah, as well? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, to all the work that's going on. We don't really have a craft for today. I guess you guys can make us the cookies if you want. But here's the activity today. We have activities for you to yep. do, though. These are all online. You can check it out on the Adventures and Edzucation. Don't forget that page is out there, guys. That group is out there. If you haven't joined it, join it if you get a chance. There's some really cool activities on there. The crafts are on there. And some of the other things that our, that our zoo partner, our colleagues are doing are on there. Our neighbor at Naturalist is there. Um, the, uh, Mr. Bob is on there. We have a pet detective series yeah, on there. Yeah, if you'd like to do some science experiments with your dog and do some training. That is on there. Um, some zoo science is still happening on there. So Adventures in Ed Zookation is a group. If you haven't been on there in a while, check it out. There's and some really cool still stuff. We're classroom programs on Thursdays. Classroom programs uh, are still there. all of you homeschooling parents. Yep. And who knows what's going to happen, right, yeah. with the school season. So that's one of the matching. You're matching up what you eat. And on the back of this one. Oh, it's a fun one. It's a matching. Draw the arrow. Draw an arrow. Draw a line, too. So what kind of food do you eat? If you are a limnivore, what do you eat if you're a ranivore, a vermivore? One of our favorites we just learned about, a sanguinivore. We'll Sanguine. That that's, a, that's a blood eater. There's one answer for you. Right? If you know your Latin prefixes, you'll be okay. And then there's just some more different types of eaters. What kind of vor are you? And our, our, for our digital friends, our people asking, answering questions for us, they're putting up a link for oh, you Oh, thank right you, guys. Now. They're always on the ball. They're fantastic. I think it was Linda, uh, one of uh, our digital guests, Linda said uh, that you and I seem to be friends. Really? Yeah. <laughs> we really secretly can't stand each other. No, I'm just kidding. We're very good friends. Couple things coming up. Um, Wednesday is taped, but do check in. Remember, Wendy and I are there. Um, we're answering your questions. Give us a shout out. We'd love to say hi to you. It's always fun to say hi to you guys. We try to say hi to everybody. Reach out for a hello. We've gotten $80 donated just today. No kidding. So 47, 60 plus 80, 48, 40. So we're close to, Woo! we're almost to 4,000. Awesome. Thank we're you. We're like for 60 bucks. Donated. So thank you so much for that. That's fantastic. 
Everybody at North Kazoo, thanks you for your contributions and your support as well. Um, Monday is a very special day for Wendy and for me to share with you. The animal is awesome, but the day itself is special, and we'll tell you why on Monday. So please tune in on Monday, August 3rd. And this Wednesday is a very summery animal. It is a summery animal. It is a summery animal, so you have to check that out at 10 o'clock as Zoo Adventures always comes to you on Mondays and Wednesdays. So, John, thank you so much for being yeah. here today. We appreciate thank your you. time. Thanks to the commissary team for letting us come in and invade their space for a little while. Uh, and thank you guys so very much for tuning in once again. It really touches us that you guys have been with us for so long. So stay safe. Thanks for bringing us into your homes. And we'll see you again soon, Wednesday morning, 10 o'clock, for Zoo Adventures. From Wendy and Steve, we'll see you soon.